Hi, folks, ladies and gentlemen, it's Rob Potter here in Mount Shasta, California. Um, I had made this little video. A friend of mine had uh, consolidated uh, some uh, videos of pixies and gnomes, and I don't know if they're fairies or elementals. I, I tend to think that they're physical beings. Maybe there's a bleed through with some of these, but there's a gentleman in England who was getting pictures, and um, I absolutely believe these are real. You can make your own decision on this, but... I can tell by this gentleman's demeanor, he's very sincere. He actually, in the video, there are two people that he takes uh, to this secret location. I'm not sure if it's in Ireland or England, but he is very sincere, very honest. He's older. He kind of huffs and puffs. He's a bit overweight and he's tromping around, kind of like I would be in those uh, conditions, but he's found these fairy people by accident and when he first found them they shot a little little arrow at his neck and he got a little woozy from it um so i think um i'll just play the video i might comment a little bit here and there but um he's taking a, wo a woman here so uh this is also uh uh it's a pretty pretty cool little, little video i think you might like it so i'll just get rid of all the stuff here I have showing on the, the home screen and we'll get this plane here. So um okay. Here we go. So um let me see. I don't I'm sure two little people. <laughs> These are little people. These are real, I believe. This gentleman um, goes hiking around and he finds them. And he's very sincere. And one of the things I, I really respect is that uh, the people he takes, he said, look, I don't want you to, uh, this girl, he says, when you see them, don't move, don't talk. And he's just walking around. And But he, he'll show you these little people. So he's pointing to, you know, there's some some stuff here, and here here's a little being there. It's a woman, so he's kind of blacked out her breasts in the center of the screen. If you see my my thing here, little creatures living in caves, and there's quite a variety of them. And this woman is genuinely amazed and amused of these cute little creatures. So, well, I'm pleased that she's actually found. Can I just get past because I want to take the blue lens and see that there? Oh, but I don't think it's practical. No, that is a man. No, it wasn't. No, <laughs> it was a female, obviously. I thought that was the, the entrance for the male, but. I know. But, Erwin, can I just ask what you're going to uh, do about the. I mean, you can't show that one. Uh, you will be uh, in trouble, will you? What uh, will you do? I don't want to get too mad. I'll figure something out. She was, um, she was afraid of showing their little breasts. The only thing I'm going to say yeah. is she's glass. She's not blue, a little grey, isn't she? She's, well, yeah, it's still bluey hue. Yeah, but it's, yeah, yeah. I think that's more of like a female. I don't know. She's a funny fucking little thing, isn't she? <laughs> Looks a bit like me now. You can tell she's very excited. That's why I came to this species, because they're, they're relatively calm. Doesn't seem to mind us being here. Oh, well, she's, oh, she's gone in. The tree itself is not particularly impressive, so I don't know why they've picked. Mm -hmm. um, it must be very spiritual, Erwin. Yeah, they, I think they, they are very, um, you know, superstitious. The colour grey yeah. represents neutrality and balance, right. which is obviously why they're such a peaceful, spiritual. They are very calm, yeah. They're not constantly getting their knickers in a twist like <laughs> pixies do. But no, I mean, just metaphorically speaking. Nice. Oh, just stay still. She's just in fashion. This is the main character. This is a little being. He looks like a lemur. 
Um, there's a, a little similarity to Gollum in the Lord of the Rings, but there's another real Gollum. These are these are little uh, trolls. You see the dark eyes, which means they're spending a lot of time in the dark in the caves. They come out. This one is very interesting up top here. It's got feathers and everything. It's quite interesting how they move. I absolutely believe this is real. I don't believe this is fake in any way, shape, or form. Um, Ooh, so that's a bit more successful. <laughs> I mean, I'd only been here like half an hour, so it was almost instant. I'm going to turn this off because I need to look where I'm going. So now we're going to see a couple of them pop up. There's one over here, way in the back. That's the guy that we kind of know that we saw before. He's a little lemur character. And he carries a stick that he beats on the tree. He doesn't seem to be trying to get away from me. He could easily hide. That's a little golem creature. He draws pictures of these various little characters. There's one. I'm not sure if that's a hat or a mushroom type head. It's probably a hat. They have little clothes, little fabrics that they make things. There's so quite a variety of them. I wasn't them. expecting that. That's uh, unusual to happen straight away like that. Um, um, coating. Uh, There's one here. Uh, quite suspicious that's of. That's um, they're quite hard to. Two, oh, there's another one there behind that little mound. They, they, they sort of pop up and then run behind the when they're, when they're moving around. They tend to sort of go down behind the leaves, so it's quite hard to to and they look quite similar. So it's quite hard to know how many there actually were. Uh, oh, now that's a beating stick that they knock against the wood. That's what alerted me. And when I turn around to him, I'm just pointing the camera at me uh, because. When I'm tracking it around with them, uh, I think they get a bit intimidated by it. So I'm sort of pointing it at me. I don't really have much to say, but I just <laughs> uh, just want them to show that this isn't some sort of uh, weapon. Um, hold on, I'm trying to get. They're obviously very skittish. Get, get, okay. They're very small. Their ecosystem is very delicate. They can't have anyone know them. And I think he left because he respects them. Here's here's one back there popping up. And uh, let's see. I think this was here, there he is up the, here in the center. I think this was the chap with the beating stick, although I can't see the stick in this shot. So he might have put it down somewhere. But it was the same area. And uh, I'm pretty sure there weren't any nuts on this bit, so I don't know what he's... What he's examining there. <laughs> so it really just occurred to me that they're not wearing their, their winter. There might be a wing on it, might be a bird. Many picked these. There you go. That's miles away. You probably won't be able to see. He's found a little piece of art. There's and there's a guy there. you're going to see come up top here. With an outstretched arm or a wing. Or... They don't like him moving stuff, so he's going to put it back. But he's very respectful. Oh. There's one oh, up there. Spotted. Um, yeah, okay. Right, he's not happy with that. Um, I'll put it back again. Not what I wanted to happen. Looks like I'm stealing. Put it back again where it was. Right. Don't really know what I'm doing. Let me get back to the camera. It's the problem you get when you're trying to show things off. And some manky old flying saucers in the bottom of my bag. Only three of them, but I think he has some uh, the best thing I can do. Candy is leaving okay. some candy. He's going to give him He's diabetes. <laughs> go up there and leave these. So it's while he's possible. doing this, I'm just going to mention that he's very kind, very gentle, very respectful of them. Uh, they did shoot an arrow, a little tiny spear at him and made him woozy. They don't like people around. Now, I think they're physical beings that are living just subsurface. And there's quite a variety of looks. Some look like acorns. Some look like little chocolate 
chip gingerbread cookies with different color hair and eyes. It's really exotic, these various looks. And I'm sure the variety, and these are the little sugar-coated uh, sours that he has here. So um, let's see here. It's, um, you know, he, he moves around, not all of the, uh, the images are, um, are very clear. I don't know why we're keeping, uh, stopping here, but let me push that on there. So I'm going to show you as much as possible, these little, uh, creatures. from what I remember and stuff. So he, he turns the camera off. There's a little food he leaves and I think they see it. So they might come and enjoy it later and check themselves into the little tiny gnome hospital for diabetes. <laughs> it's a lot of processed sugar in those things. Uh, you know, he's not a professional cameraman, obviously, but uh, the fact that he's catching these and, you know, after a period of time, he did decide that um, um, he should leave them alone. They were kind of upset. He would, had bought uh, several people there and uh, they need to be left alone. They would be destroyed. People would follow him. I think he received a lot of trolls and a lot of hate on the internet, but my feeling is this gentleman is absolutely honest, sincere. His name is Erwin Saunders. If anybody knows him in England or can get him in touch with me, my website is a promise revealed.net. There goes one in the middle, rushing away. And uh, let's hear what he has to say here. Worst art heist. <laughs> actually, just getting set up for an intro, but there's one hanging around. He's up there. Actually, I'll straight away before I even done anything hold on just just up oh he's gone going so they're back there in the back they're kind of moving he's around okay, they keep an eye on him acting, you know he's strange he, he doesn't well, I was, actually i'm gonna i'll just go up he there. doesn't make anything aggressive he makes no aggressive moves right, towards well, them goes, oh, but um he's up there and you know he's obviously you know you know working and walking around so here, here here's a Quite a few, I think you're going to see. I think this is one where four or five of them pop That's up. It. Oh, there's a guy up there. Um, and there's some sort of gourd that he blows into to make a sound, if you can listen to it. Yeah. You just wait while it's doing it now. Tilt. That tilt. I don't know who's controlling it. We have that branch sort of goes across. Then. Get that one. No, that's too close. It's hard to tell. Oh, okay. Look at that one. Right, that doesn't Very look trippy. Good. One in the back. There's another one up there. There's another one up there. Look at these eyes. Um, right, that doesn't look friendly. Let's. Okay, I'll explain about one just by that log there, it's stalking me. Right there. See, he's moving too much. I'm just, before I go, I he's going to leave these little candies there that for these little creatures. So my friend took, uh, he had about two years worth of uh, videos and uh, can't seem to get this to play. There we go. I referred to his Aztec water whistles there. So. Sorry about that. Very sensitive, this rumble thing here. Yeah, well, I am. I really am being watched. I'll try and get another shot of it before I go. Oh, I've dropped all those. I'll just leave it all. all right. I'm not going to keep. 
filming him because they're being quite nasty at the moment. I just from the rain in here. Ah, I can hear that noise again. I don't know if it's coming out, so it's quite quite distant. The whistling sound. Right, I don't know if that's. Probably be okay. Anyway, right. if anyone from England, anyone from England uh, knows this guy, um, I'd love to interview him. Um, I know um, he doesn't go there anymore, but uh, from what I gather, or if he does, he's not doing any filming or recording, but he's very kind and respectful of these creatures. And I really sense in this gentleman a very sincere, uh, kind and loving heart. And um, you're going to see some other uh, uh, fun stuff up here as we move forward. So he's showing the kind of the entrance where they come and go here. So you did notice that they have uh, some art there. And there's one up there. Now they're looking at him really closely. <laughs> so... Yeah, up here, and he moves away from that person and goes over to this guy. Yeah. So it'd be kind of nice if he would just hold still and watch one until they leave. But, you know, he's, you know, I think it gives it more credibility to me, the fact that he's not very professional with the video. I don't think that's contrived. Here's a kill creature, you know. <laughs> they don't like to be seen. Um, And you see the variety it's really fun. So there's a guy running away. They run away. Once you get in focus or something, they run away. So, oh, so here they're looking at um, this little, little necklace they put around a tree. They actually made this. These are from the little people in there. And, uh, um, She's just examining the craftsmanship here. And um, you can just, you can hear them uh, just talk, talking amongst themselves. And she's been told repeatedly to not move, don't make a movement. And very excited to be here. They should celebrate Christmas. Why not? Oh, because they, they, they wouldn't have a Bible. They wouldn't know about, you know, what they would they have no concept of that. So they might have. Father Christmas, so they, right oh, there. It wasn't Father Christmas, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just probably my leg. Uh, like a Christmas elf, no, right? Didn't no, no. Didn't have Rudolph, no. <laughs> right. Because oh. she goes, um, she goes, Auntie Carol, I've been looking at all of her, her comments on Irwin's videos, yeah. and his fans absolutely love him, and they want to ask him all these questions, and they want to know more all about him. Yeah, well, Tom, she tried doing that with the Ask Irwin thing. I know, but Andy... He does podcasts for a living. Who's, Who's Andy? It's Ellen's husband. Okay. And what he could do is, um, uh, so he could set it up, record, you listen? Yeah, yeah. And record it up. Yeah, I to keep an eye on me. Oh. You really want them to keep the... And what you do is you do something like a Q and A with... Wow. Yeah, this is really a problem with this. Lovely still of that. Anyway, she goes, um, yeah. cook, cook, do you have another biscuit? Uh, it's like you're losing your concentration a bit while I'm talking. So what we'd do is we'd read a few of these comments out and then and then you could tell people. In a podcast. In a podcast, yeah. So, so I could, you could say now. What questions would you like to ask me if I did a podcast? And would you like me to do a podcast? Go and ask them. Ask them and say, and say great new comments. Ask them now? Yeah, go on. Uh, what? I can't, what was I asked? What's great? Would you like I, me to do a podcast? Would you like me to do a podcast? And if so. And if so, what questions have we got for me? Is that it? 
Yeah. And, and Would you like me to do a podcast and what, what, what questions have you got for me? Yeah. And what what you do is you put if you put them in it's comments. Starting to rain. Oh no. You got an umbrella. Yeah. Well, that's for the camera. Oh. Irwin's uh, gone off up there because he he thought he could hear something. So oh, I must keep my voice down, mustn't I? And so he's taken his little camera. I actually, I don't. Okay, so what she's doing here is she's made this little fairy based on his descriptions. I think this is her first time here. She's made like a little tiny uh, local creature doll. And uh, she's talking about it. And a little bit later on, they're going to nick it, as they say in England. They're going to nick it from her. Her bag. They're going to be off looking somewhere else. But this is kind of like a highlights reel of over two years of him going up there. And my he had a lot of stuff that was showing nothing. So my friend edited it out and did the highlights reel. I don't think he edited it enough. There's a lot of, uh, you know, downtime and huffing and puffing, but you can check it out here. And then you start prodding it and at, at first all fibers you know just sort of fly around a bit but after a while you can see it they start to stick together and they go solid like that so you can see here our little skirt the more i do it the more it'll start to stick together like that and you can sort of like shape it you know the more you prod the more sort of solid it gets where's he gone I think he's gone for a light. <laughs> See here, there's some. You mentioned it before. Some uh, stones which they place as trees are growing. He's obviously been here quite a long time and grown up with the tree. Oh, look at him! The green man. <laughs> Oh, what's he doing now? Oh, he's seen something. He's put down here. There we go. See that one there? He's got like a hat on. Looks like a, a little creature there out for a hike. He's got a bag. <laughs> She's wanting me to come down. All right. Probably, oh, yeah, because you approach. Come, come back. Sorry, so there's one of the little creatures. She she nicked, she nicked a little, the little uh, Christmas present. From his bag, she's so excited. She did take it from me bag. Oh, happy Christmas, you. So that's a little lemur. If you look in the Arantia book. The humanity was first hybridized from a lemur a long time ago. And then we have uh, about 400,000 years ago, after a previous cycle of humans, various images of these little uh, creatures, really cool little beings. Uh, they're intelligent. They seem to trust him to a certain extent. You know, this one's got, uh, looks like a woman with some breasts, and uh, large top on, and um, yeah, just let's just enjoy this for a minute. These are the still shots of the. There's a little arrow that shot him. Now he said he got woozy, and uh, I don't know if that's an arrow or what they're doing, but that you know he's got something, some kind of hat. That one that looks pretty nice. That guy looks pretty friendly. The facial expression, they're obviously very curious and very timid because of their size. And they probably had some 
negative experiences with uh, contact with humanity. <laughs> Look at that guy. Or gal or whatever. We'll call that the Christmas heist. This guy's actually moving pretty quickly. It looks like he's running or jogging through the woods. Looks like he has a British type of hat that they would wear in a car for a Sunday drive. You know, these little creatures up top. This one looks like an acorn. Isn't that wild? Oh. He's just coming up from down there. But hopefully he won't spot that. So what he just did was he just placed a camera. So the little creature that's coming up that will pass by, this is the golem. I need to get put it on me. I, I... I want to go back to that one. I thought that's a, a pretty cute little uh, little creature there walking. He, he, you can see his movement is very much like a golem. So I have a feeling that, um, you know, the uh, Lord of the Rings is kind of based on truth. He's just coming up from down there. But hopefully he won't spot that. And if so, he'll have to go past us, so we'll get, get a decent stable shot of him. I, I need to get put it on me. I, I need to get back to that camera because he's gone out of range and we can't really see him from here now. So I, I can't really do it just yet because he'll hear me scrunch across those leaves. I can't really tell. Isn't it trippy? You can see the, I think Lord of the Rings is really based on some serious fact or something. I don't know. You know, this is a different entrances. So a unique time. Okay. So this is your camera going. So I'm going to turn um, this yeah. off. So he's doing okay. a little walk in the cave here with a guy. They actually are going in. I, I'm not sure who he's with the girl or the guy, but they're definitely not wanted in here. And there's a type of, it looks like a, a Gila monster kind of comes in and chases him out. So um, we're going to see them going in this cave. And I don't know why. It just really does keep freezing. I apologize, folks. But um, there's a little Gila monster or a Komodo dragon, maybe. So they're getting out. It's kind of chasing them. So, you know, he was doing a little exploration in there looks kind of like uh like i said it looks like a a komodo dragon of some sort that the little people are shooing the humans away so yeah yeah so that's about it I'm going to play a little bit here. No, it's just a Gila monster. So you've seen all of it there. And um, we're going to go ahead and stop the sharing here. So I hope you enjoyed that. One of the reasons I did this is there's so many things that are going to become forward in this next year that you're going to be uh, exposed to. The government has actually announced extraterrestrials. Um, I'm going to be interviewing a, a woman who's a, pre, uh, a professor at Worcester University in Ma Massachusetts. Uh, <laughs> Worcester, Massachusetts. And um, she's able to actually do um, talks on disclosure. I'm going to be doing a, hopefully a little series with her um, on there to expose the young kids in college. Their minds are opened. They're not prejudiced like people who know everything and and are full of knowledge and they just want to cast stones instead of investigating my information. So I hope you enjoyed this little snippet of the wee little people. And um, I want you to check out my website. I'm going to ask you to like and subscribe to my channel. 
Um, I have an inner circle on my uh, website, thepromisedrevealed.net. And I know that in the future, people are going to be interested in my information. I'm hoping this next year that I'll have more, more, a more fer fertile ground of people who are interested in hearing the messages that I have directly from the Venusians. So I hope you share my information with people. And I hope that those of you who are watching are enjoying this little we people, if anyone knows of Edwin Saunders in either England or Ireland, if you want to reach out to him, I'd love to support him to come to my conference in Mount Shasta. He'll be respected. He won't be ridiculed. And he can share uh, about this contact and his own personal experience. Okay. So the promise revealed.net. Uh, and um, I got that summer conference coming up in July. I hope you all to come to that. Uh, good things are coming for the earth. The victory of the light is here. We've already won. And uh, it's a matter of cleanup now. They've still got some humans going crazy and uh, false flags being created by the Israelis um, in their attempt to genocide and create World War III. They're pretty much getting a lot of hate from the rest of the world from from their extreme anger and prejudice. There's a lot of very sick people uh, in Israel who want to kill people because they're on their land, supposedly. Unfortunately, um, they exist. I think there's a majority of people that are turning away from this type of thought. They're living in the homeland there. And we all have to see each other as brothers and sisters, as Christ taught. So if you're, a, you know, if you're a fanatical Zionist who think the Goyim need to be killed and, you know, you're the only chosen people, um, I'll say you choose yourself by your actions of caring and loving patience and kindness toward your fellow man. So let's keep our eyes on the wonderful, exciting mysteries of the universe and on this earth. They're going to be exposed in the next few years. Lots of changes are coming, folks. So... I'm going to thank you all for watching and uh, we'll end this meeting. Victory to the light. <laughs>